So just one week after the release of beta 3, Apple returns with iOS 16.1 beta 4 for registered developers. And as usual, it should be out for public beta testers very soon. And in addition to this release, we also saw iPadOS 16.1 beta 5, which actually shows up as iOS 16 beta 11. We also got macOS Ventura beta 10, watchOS 9.1 beta 4, tvOS 16.1 beta 4, and HomePod OS 16.1 beta 4. But of course, this video is all about iOS 16.1 beta 4 and what's new in the software. So looking at the size of this update, you could see it came in at just over 670 megabytes on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. That is coming from beta 3, but of course that size will vary depending on your version and your device. Now if we go into our settings and let's go to our general about, take a look at the build number here, we could see that the new build number is 20B. 5064C. So we do have a C at the end of the build number, which indicates we are getting pretty close to the final release. I would say maybe one or two more betas to go. And if we scroll down a little bit to the modem firmware, that is now 1.13.01. So a minor change there to the firmware, and that should help with cell connectivity, which I've actually been struggling with in beta 3. So hopefully that does make a difference. And of course, I will tell you guys about that in a follow up video. But anyways, what's new here in beta four and the first couple of things have to do with shortcuts. So number one, automations that run shortcuts now actually work as intended. So for whatever reason, in the past few betas, really ever since beta one of iOS 16.1, automations that run shortcuts just simply would not work, but now they work as expected. And then the other fix in the shortcuts application is the get current focus action now works as expected as well. So before when you had a shortcut with this action, or sometimes even when you just tapped on the get current focus, it would crash the shortcuts application, but that has also been fixed with beta four. Now, something else that I noticed immediately after installing beta four is that the keyboard haptic feedback is more subdued and subtle than it has been really since it was introduced with iOS 16. So now when you tap to type, you know, on each key, you will feel the haptic feedback, but it is much more subtle than it was previously. And I actually like this change. I was in the minority that just didn't really like how, you know, how strong that feedback was when you tapped on the keys. I thought it was too much. It was kind of distracting and it also wore down on battery life. So now that has been improved here with this fourth beta. At least I think it's an improvement. Now, some people might think that it's not an improvement and that it's a bug, but I personally like how the haptic keyboard feedback is much more subdued here with this fourth beta. I'm also noticing in beta 4 that we have this little white outline around the dynamic island when we're in the always on mode like on the always on display so there's this little white outline there you can see compared to beta 3 where we did not have any outline around it and I'm not too sure how I feel about this now something that made headlines last week was that the AirPods Pro first generation received the adaptive transparency toggle in the third beta of iOS 16.1 but as I mentioned in my video last week I said this was most likely a bug because that feature relies on the h2 chip which is only found in the second generation AirPods Pro and lo and behold with this new fourth beta of iOS 16.1 that toggle has been removed which does confirm that that was just a bug. The adaptive transparency mode is only available for the AirPods Pro 2. Now, something else that I was a little bit surprised to see here with Beta 4, or I guess not see, is that if you go into the general section and settings here, we still do not have the matter section. So that appeared in Beta 2, but it was removed in Beta 3, and it's still not here in Beta 4. And the reason I'm surprised that it's not here in Beta 4 is because today, Matter 1.0 officially launched launched and Apple is planning to add support with 16.1. So I was a little bit surprised to see Matter not put back into the beta software here. And if you're curious about Matter, they do have a launch event scheduled for November 3rd, but you know, the first Matter devices could show up really any day now. And you know, Google did just release their new smart home products. So those are all gonna be compatible with Matter as well. And like I said, we should see Matter support officially launch with iOS 16.1. And then with every beta, I do check to see if anything is new with iCloud Photo Library. So that, of course, is a new feature that's coming in iOS 16, most likely 16.1. Apple did delay this feature with iOS 16, and it's not there in 16.0.1 or 0.2, but it is here in 16.1. It's been there ever since the first beta. So I would imagine that iCloud Photo Library will be officially launching 
with iOS 16.1 after a minor delay. And then take a look at what's been fixed here in beta 4. So now when you tap on album artwork on the lock screen, when you have widgets, we no longer have this little wobble right here of the you know music player down here. So before the music platter would have this really weird buggy looking wobble to it when you had widgets on the lock screen. But now that has been fixed here with beta 4. I've complained about that in every single iOS 16.1 video. Now everything is smooth and doesn't look super buggy. So shout out to Apple for listening and finally taking care of that bug that just drove me absolutely crazy. And then as usual, we do also have some changes in the code on the back end here in beta four. So shout out to Steve Moser for finding these little changes here in the code. Now, as far as bugs go, like I said, the AirPods Pro first generation getting that adaptive transparency toggle was in fact a bug that is only for the second generation AirPod Pros. However, speaking of the second generation AirPod Pros, some users are getting a replace battery soon alert. So I'm not sure if this is related to the AirPods firmware or if it's related to iOS 16.1 betas. But nonetheless, we do have that bug right there for the AirPods Pro 2. Now also, I am still having the random resprings when my device is charging. So I cannot confirm if that's been fixed here in beta 4, but as of beta 3, I was still having the issue where my phone and my iPad would randomly respring when it's charging. And then another issue that's been longstanding is the CarPlay issue with mic sensitivity. So I cannot confirm if that's been fixed here in beta 4, but if you do have CarPlay, you know, make a phone call and ask the person on the other line if you sound better now with beta 4. I'm really curious to see if that has been fixed. Now also I mentioned at the top of the video that the modem firmware has been updated and hopefully that does fix the cell connectivity because it's been pretty weak in beta 3 for me on my 14 Pro. So hopefully this update does improve cell signal and cell connectivity, which I will report on that in my Apple Weekly episode this weekend. And then taking a look at the release notes for beta four, you can see we have a resolved issue for home that says it fixed uncertified accessory notifications might appear when pairing matter accessories. So a lot of these have to do with matter accessories. You can see the other known issues here are also related to matter. And then we do still have that memory allocation issue that is still known here with beta four. So hopefully that does get fixed with the final release or by the final release. Now, as far as the performance goes, I am currently running a Geekbench test just to see how those scores compare to beta three, but overall just first impressions after using beta four, it does feel a little bit smoother to me than beta three. So just all around, just from the lock screen, just from the home screen, everything feels a little bit smoother than it did in beta three, which is a very good sign. Now let's just see what these scores say about it. So we scored an 1879 on the single core and a 5451 on the multi core. So you can see how that compares to beta three right there. So it was slightly lower on the single core, but slightly higher, actually a good bit higher on the multi core. So pretty interesting results. Of course, those don't tell the full story, but it is always nice to track those. And you can see some nice improvements from beta two down here. And then as far as the battery life goes, a battery life has really not been the best on iOS 16.1, really any of the betas. So I'm hoping that the final version or the RC will be an improvement over iOS 16 and 16.0.2. You know, we're not expecting as good a battery life as iOS 15 just yet, but I'm hoping for at least a minor improvement in the battery department. So it's too early to say yet if it has improved here with beta four. But again, as always, I will let you guys know in my Apple weekly episode coming this weekend. All right. So now what is next for Apple? So next up is going to be most likely the fifth beta of iOS 16.1. Now there is a slight possibility of the next version being the RC, but my guess is going to be a beta five, then an RC, and then the final release in the last week, the last full week of October. So next week should be beta five and then RC, like I mentioned. Now we could also see an iOS 16.0.3. So if we don't see that this week, I would expect to see that next week on the week of the 10th, just because there are still a lot of issues out there, especially for iPhone 14 owners. And I don't think Apple wants to have them wait all the way until the end of the month for some fixes. So I would not be surprised to see a 16.0.3 really as early as this week, but also more likely next week if it's not this week. So we'll have to wait and see. And of course, we do also expect to see iPad OS 16, which is going to release as 16.1. We will see that this month as well, along with Mac OS 13 Ventura. Now we're not expecting a Apple event this month anymore, but we should see new products roll out via press release. So I would expect 
iPad OS and Mac OS to roll out, you know, after those new products get released or on the same day as those products get released. So there you have it. That is iOS 16.1 beta four. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe for my Apple weekly follow-up video coming this weekend, where I will tell you more about my experience with the software. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Oh,